And um, there you go. This meeting is being live streamed. Make sure that uh, the recording is actually going before we do get officially started. There we go. All right, so welcome everybody. Glad to see those of you brave enough and ready enough to, to, to join us live. Uh, first time back, we know we'll hopefully build this audience and have some more folks joining us over time. Um, but we appreciate you making the, the effort and being here live. Uh, we are recording this session and we'll, we'll post that to the Tuesday Tech Talk YouTube channel. Um, and But if you do have questions, feel free to open up your mics. Uh, ask, I'll, I'll also be watching the chat. Uh, so if you do have questions, uh, put them there or don't be afraid to open up uh, your mics and ask, ask a question and we'll do our best to uh, take care of you. So today, uh, by the way, I'm Clint Stevens, Southwest Education Development Center. And today we've got our media mentor and Canvas queen, uh, Chris Hott, that will be taking us through a brand new, long awaited, very frequently asked for feature of Canvas, how to do student annotation assignments. So I will turn the time over to Chris. Uh, I'll, I'll walk through the slides as we go and just let me know when you wanna take over for a demo, Chris, all right? Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's kind of talk about student annotation tools. Go ahead and turn the slide, Clint. So, you know, why Canvas student annotations? Let's talk first about those of you who are all using Canvas, right? Been using it. How do we accept student submissions now? What were some of the things that we've been using in the past? Those of you that have been using Canvas, tell me how you got student work into Canvas. What were some of the things that you used and how did that work for you? So go ahead and unmute and speak up or put it in the chat. So I haven't used Canvas a lot, so I'm not a good person to ask. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, that's fair. I haven't used Canvas since college, so <laughs> I don't use it too much in the elementary school, but seeing how it can possibly help in that category. Okay. okay. Randy or Denise, anything to add? Sandy? I haven't really used it either. Okay. In so the elementary. This, okay, so this would be this will be interesting for you to know because the elementary really struggled with this the most. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how it kind of started, how Canvas started with this in the next slide. But in the elementary, when teachers wanted to get that work from kids, we had some really clunky workarounds. Some of it were just hold your work up hold it up to the camera and take a picture of it and try and submit. Can you imagine trying to grade something like that? Okay. Or the kids would have to download it, find it in their document. Clint, there's something in the chat. Um, try and find it in their document and then uh, write on it and upload it. We use things like DocHub or Cami, and uh, that was a third party service and you would have to upload it and the kids would have to download it and you had to have the paid subscription to integrate and everything was just clunky and awkward and it just didn't work. And so we constantly, we the, the forums and we, the help tickets were, it's not working. How do we do it? How do we get kids to be able to just fill out a simple worksheet? Um, so this was part of the answer. So yeah, next slide. Chat, Denise mentioned Google Docs and Cami. So she's she's aware of the, the pain points that, that yes. the Cami process has caused. Yeah, and and Cami was a really good solution when it first came out, but I think when the pandemic started, Cami was not ready for the growth that it saw, and there was a lot of times that all of a sudden, you know, the 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 forums or the the help tickets and Facebook was a great place to kind of follow that when every, is Cami down um, because their servers could not handle all of the the traffic that it was getting. Um, so Canvas, we kind of did talk about this a little at the beginning. Canvas was originally designed for college students, right? And these students were typing out um, their research or their papers in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, and they would just submit those. And those were easy to submit as a file because they were typing those out. 
As high school started using Canvas more, there was a need for those worksheet type of submissions. And so, like I said, those third party programs like Doc Hub and Cami were used. And then came the pandemic and that's when middle schools and elementary started using um, Canvas. And that's when we really saw the need for something simple and easy um, for students to be able to turn work in and for a teacher to be able to just put a simple vocabulary worksheet or you know a fill in the blank something like that that students could easily type something in we tried using google slides where you made a solid background and that you had the sliding text boxes and kids would move things around and i mean just teaching the kids how to use the tools was half the battle and so many different workarounds it was just we know how frustrating it was for you and canvas saw the need too so um, they worked on it their engineers worked on it and by May, yeah, too little too late, right? Um, they finally had their student annotations done. So during the summer it came out. And so we've really been trying hard to let everybody know about it. If you look in the help section of your Canvas, um, look on the little help button and then there's a, a frequently asked questions and there's a doc right there that has some tutorials on it. We've tried to put it in the announcements. We're doing stuff like this so that you can be able to see it, but we're gonna demo it now. So go ahead and go to the next slide. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look. I'm going to share my screen and continue. And which screen do I want to share? Where'd it go? There we go. This one. Okay. Can you see my Canvas screen now? Should see crossword puzzle at the top. Everybody see that? Yep, we're good. Okay, so I'm in a module in my Canvas account, and I'm going to start fresh from creating assignment. These are a few that I've already created, so if we have time, we'll look at some different features. But I'm going to start fresh so you can see the whole process. So I like to create my assignments from a module. Now, you can certainly go to assignments and create your assignment there, and then use the same way to move it into a module. I just got in the habit of adding things right to a module. You create it here in the module and it still has its home base over here in assignments, but I like to work out of a modules. Both ways work. So I'm going to go create an assignment right here. And like I said, if I've already created it, I can pull from one of these, but I'm going to say create assignment and I'm going to call this one plants. I'm going to call it two because I already have one. And I'm just going to say add the item and see it's created it right there in my module. But now I want to edit it. So I just click on it. And now I'm going to build it. This would be just like if I created it out of assignments. So I already know in my mind what I want this assignment to be. I already have a PDF. I already know what I want it to look like. So I want to give instructions to my students first. We always want to give clear instructions. So I'm going to say read the article and fill out the document. Okay, but I need to get an article, right? So we're lucky because we can just go pull articles right from Utah's online library. So if I go to kids info bits, okay, then I can go and pull right from Utah's online library and get items right from here. So I, I'm gonna talk about photosynthesis with this art, um, assignment that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna look for plants. And I know that because I've already looked and I know I have this article and I'm going to look for this photosynthesis article. And if I click on keep reading right here to go to the full article, I've already looked at this article and this is the content that I want. So there's a button right here that says embed this document. I click right on that. Now I've got the content that I want my students to read. So that's all done. So I don't have to type in a whole lesson, put it right there. And I say how many points I want. This one's gonna be 10 points. If I'm doing um, graded um, groups, I can put this in the assignment group that I want it to be for grading. Um, and then here is where that student annotation comes into place. So I'm gonna make this submission an online submission. And there it is, student annotation. I click on that. And I have this folder on my desktop already. So I'm going to say upload the file 
and I have it in my downloads because I went and found it somewhere. This one I actually found in eMedia under the seed resources, lots of great resources there. So I went into eMedia, I found a lesson that correlates with photosynthesis, found the lesson, downloaded it, added it, and now I'm going to open it up. And now it's going to be in there. I'm going to sign it to everyone. It's going to be due tomorrow. Okay. Just to the and, note for the recording and for those folks, um, we couldn't see Chris's little file chooser. We could oh. only see the canvas window. So she, when she clicked that that button to uh, to attach an assignment, it she went to her finder and you know went to where it was on her desktop. So you've all seen that before. Yeah. And we this just couldn't see it on the video. And that's a good note too. Let me go back and do that um, because you can use your available files if you've already uploaded it to Canvas, if it's something you've used. If you go to for course files, because I've already uploaded this, I can just choose my course files or my, my files. So if you've already used it in Canvas or uploaded it to your Canvas, then you can just use that as well. Good point, Clint, thank you. Um, so we've set the date, I'm gonna save and publish it. And now our assignment is ready. We're not gonna see that annotation yet, that PDF. So we'll just pop over here to student view. And now I'm looking at it just as a student would. Now you may notice, I'm gonna move that screen over. You may notice that this looks a little bit different. So let's talk about this just for a second. You may not see this, prog this bar here, um, this is called enhanced assignments. And if you haven't been using um, Canvas that much, you may not know the pain of students not being able to find your feedback. This has been a common issue that teachers spend all this time providing all this rich feedback and the kids could never find it. And Canvas knew that, came up with this enhanced feedback. Now the students will see this progress bar across the top and it'll tell them exactly where they're at in their, in their process of submitting their assignment and they can just click on the feedback and we'll look at that a little bit more. So this is what the student will see. The student's going to read the assignment right here. It's got the vocabulary because we pulled this right out of Utah's online library. So I'm gonna, after I've read the assignment, here's my citations. And now we have our annotation toolbar. If you've used Canvas and you've used SpeedGrader, this may look familiar as you've used the doc viewer in SpeedGrader. It's the same exact tool that you've used. Um, so there's a couple tools on here that we can look at. One, you can have them just download it right here. This is the page switcher. You can just go from page to page. Um, this one tilts it. So if it's, if you load it upside down, they can turn it. They can zoom it so they can make it bigger or smaller. But this tool makes it really nice too because they can make it full screen. So now I've got it full screen. I don't have the clutter of the canvas around me. Then now we'll look at the rest of the tools. Here is my cursor. This one is a comment tool. So if I was a student and maybe there was a word I didn't know or I wanted to comment on something, I could just click on it and say, Sometimes I wonder, so say maybe this was in a body of text that you wanted them to read. Um, you know, here, this is obviously you want them to answer the question, but they could put comments in here that you could uh, reply to as well. Um, this is a highlighter. So if you were had a body of text that you wanted them to highlight all the nouns, then they could highlight the nouns. They could highlight all the verbs in, or let's say, let's say all the nouns in green, all the verbs in blue, did that opposite. Um, but you could have them highlight different vocabulary words and different things. Um, this is a text box. So then right here, what will happen when plants are grown in places with different amounts of light? So after you've read that article and it told you what happens, then you click on the text box and they will grow differently. They will grow less with less light. They write their answer in here. Strike through, you know what that is. That will do a strike through, okay? Oops, I didn't highlight that. Oh, forgot, I gotta type. Gotta highlight the strike through and then when I type, oops. 
Oh, maybe I forgot how to do that one. I have to go back and practice on that one. This one is the highlighter. So if you say, which plant do you think grew in an area with light? You could say this one, you can draw right on it. Okay. This one, you can annotate a large square. Okay, so if you wanted to draw this and then you could make a sentence about this, here are two plants. So you get the idea of the different types of tools that the students could use and write on and, and fill in the text. So they could do that through all of this content. And then once they get done, they come down to the bottom and they click submit assignment. And yay, I submitted on time. Okay. So what do you think? How's that? Was that be pretty simple for your littles? It tells your students. You showed a lot of extra stuff, Chris. Maybe one more time through just the basics. Yeah. <laughs> here's well, an assignment. Here's a PDF. Let me put some text on it and submit it. Yep. So, yeah, that was a lot right there, huh? But let me show you what it looks in speed grader and the feedback. And then I've got another one that will show you just a real simple step. Perfect. So this shows that it was submitted. Okay. And then I'm going to leave student view. Okay. And then if I, now I'm looking at as a teacher, okay, I go to speed grader. And now I can see all those annotations. I have those exact same tools. I can do those exact same things. I can see all of those comments the students did. I can reply to them and comment with the students. I can grade it. I can also make a comment right here and say, you need to complete, okay? okay? And once I say you need to complete it, I can reassign it to them. So it puts it back on their to-do list, okay? And then after I'm done with that, I can go back to the assignment. We'll go back to home, okay? And then I'm done with that assignment. So as Clint said, Let's do another basic one, okay? So this one, I've done a crossword puzzle, okay? So we'll show the basic steps here. I'm gonna edit it, write the instructions, use your vocabulary words to complete the puzzle, use the annotation tools we learned about in class today, okay? Come up here and say, do a file upload. I think I still have that PDF. So I'm going to say upload file. And this one right here. And while her screen's gray, she's just picking the file from her yep. computer chooser. And again, you could pick it from your course files if you've already uploaded it, or if you've uploaded it to your um, all your files, you could have it right there. But just my course files, I haven't, up yeah, I've uploaded it already. So now I have that uploaded, same kind of thing. I assign it, give the dates and save it. Now, not all the tools work on everything. This is a little bit different. You can use a Word doc here. You can do an image. You can do multiple formats um, and to upload things, not just a PDF. Yeah. So I'll do a student view, okay. And now I'm back in this and I don't even have to use the large view, but if I wanted to just zoom it, I could make it bigger and say, now I'm doing a crossword puzzle. And so I'll look at the clues and this one's actually in Spanish and I forgot to get the key. In fact, a teacher just asked me about this um, yesterday. He emailed me and said, hey, is there a way that I could do a crossword puzzle with my kids? And so I did this and showed him how to do it. But if, I forgot to get the key for the Spanish and I don't know Spanish, so I'm just gonna make up words. So you just click on the text and you type in here and you would type in the letter. And then, so the kids could just type in the, oops, I went too far. The kids would just type in the letters and they could move them up right here. 
to move them to fit in the boxes a little bit better. They can change the sizes of the words. So if they make, need to make them smaller and bigger, so they could, they could make them fit. That might take a little bit of manipulation on their part, but they could also draw them with the, the drawing tool. Um, it's harder to draw with the mouse and especially on a mouse pad. So that's been, that's been a little bit harder for the students, but then, um, then they could submit it that way. But the nice thing is when, oh, I don't have any feedback on this one. Let me leave the student view. The nice thing is when the students are viewing their assignments, let me go back to this plants two one. When the students are viewing their assignments, was that feedback view? See how the feedback shows right there? It used to be the kids had to do about three or four clicks the old way to find their feedback. In this enhanced assignments, their feedback is right here and they can submit assignment right back to the teacher. So they can see their feedback. And if they close it, then they can see it right here. So now they have their attempt one, then they can submit another attempt just by try again right here. So it's, it's very visual, very much easier for the kids to be able to see what they need to do and where they're at in the process. It says right here, they need to review the feedback. We get a lot of teachers say, the kids said they submitted it. It doesn't say, or they did, I don't know if they read the feedback. This has made it a lot easier to use. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, any no. Questions? Yeah, there's nothing in the chat yet, um, but any comments, questions from anyone? You can unmute and speak up or drop it in the chat. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. So I'll show he this. Says, yes, very good and so easy. It, yeah. This one I've already got some, I think <laughs> I've got some annotations on, but here, you know, if you're, you know, a higher, higher level, there's so many things in here that you can do with some of these docs, having the students write on them, highlight things, make notes in when you get some higher level docs um, that they can do, especially when they put them into that full screen mode. You know, then there's no clutter. All their tools, even if they keep moving, they're on the fifth or sixth page of the doc. They still have all of their tools. You can tell, you know, tell them to highlight certain things or, you know, make notes, find out what types of animals are or what animals belong to certain biomes, whatever type of assignment you're doing, you can color code. I've seen teachers use certain colors for different language types or, you know, different biomes, what, or different, you know, any type of factors in that content area that you're learning. Um, so you can use these. And then when the kids submit them, it's really clear. No more having to to hold up a bunch of scribbles up to the camera or, or anything else. Um, I think once the you start- a question in the chat, uh, if you print the doc, will the annotations print as well? Uh, I believe so. If you download yes. it from the speed grader, mm -hmm. yeah, all the annotations will be there. Yep, because watch, I'll download this. And it even says annotated. See, all the annotations are right there. Can't see, you're, you're just sharing your oh, window. Oh, that's right, yeah. So yeah, trust me, they're there. <laughs> yep, all the annotations stay there. Yep, you can download them and it stays. So this is a fully integrated annotation toolbar. It takes, the, the only thing that it doesn't do that Cami does from what I've seen and compared is the math equations. So math teachers, it's not gonna be a complete replacement, but for everybody else, it kind of takes the place of everything that Cami and DocCub and all those other things did. Because you can also take a Word document and do it as well. So here I took, I was just messing around to see, and I took a Word document, and this is actually, Clint, this is your, um, I took the Google Doc that Clint made, <laughs> downloaded it as a Word doc, and just, and uploaded it. So a Google doc, a Word doc, you know, anything like that you can do and the kids can annotate. So you can make your own worksheet. You can get those teachers pay teachers worksheets, any PDF, just about anything you can get and take and use for this. Very, you saw how simple it was. I think one of the best things is once you have these, in, these files in your course files, 
next year when you transfer your course over, um, these course files will go along with it. So all these assignments will save. And so you'll be able to rebuild that same assignment the next year and have it. I, I think it's really going to be um, a huge benefit to kind of build up these student annotation file banks because it, it makes a folder of your student annotation files within Canvas. Good question on the printing. Hadn't even thought about that. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Tyler says clear as mud. Uh, that's the only question though, so. Okay, I have uh, a question. Yep. That, um, and I don't know, this might work, but I've been wondering if something would. If there was a way, so like if I have a, a form or like a worksheet or something that they have to complete in intervals, would this work for that? So they just have to resubmit it? Yes, like I have a document that they need to fill out at the first of the term after we do something and then the middle and the end and. Yeah. So they need to use this for that. Um, yeah, they, you could, because if you give it unlimited attempts, they would have to go back. The only thing that would prevent that is if you were crossing grading periods over that, because once a grading period closes, that assignment is not available to them. So basically, you would just have to recreate it in the next grading period. Um, does that make sense? Yes, unless yeah. you have another idea of what I could use to do that with. <laughs> Is it different pages of just a long document, Denise? Well, it's just a form that the, I like the kids to keep track of. I do it out on paper of their performance objectives that we do throughout the course. So it's like a semester. And I like them to check off as they do it. And it, it would be so nice to have a digital rather than have it in paper. Yeah, I would just use a, a digital Google form and just put the link in the assignment yeah, you would still have to recreate the assignment every quarter because once the quarter closes, you know, your that assignment is not available to the students. You would just have to create a new assignment every quarter. But they could use the same document they've already uh -huh. started to pull out. Yeah, yeah. You could use the same. Yeah, I would make it a Google. Wouldn't you think, Clint? Just make a Google form and you would just have to make a new assignment every quarter. And that's easy enough. Yeah, that's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Because I, I just like the idea of having it digital and then have them click on it when they're done. Yeah. And then I get a copy or download it if I need it for my documentation. Yeah. And we've talked a lot about doing some type of student portfolios where students, you know, you keep a shared document in there where it's actually it, it lives in their drive and they share it with you. And yeah, there's a, a lot of different ways. What grade do you teach? It's high school. It's high school. Yeah, have a, a shared folder where they just have to, they keep it and they just and share I do it. That, and, and I do that in Google Docs so I don't have to go through Canvas. Yeah, yeah. But that would be, they, they would just submit because you could make their submission, um, you just make an assignment and say their submission type is um, an external tool and they just have to put, or not an external tool, it has to be online and they could be the, the, website URL, no, file upload, no, website URL, yeah. They do a URL and then it brings up uh, when they when they do it, the Google icon shows up and they can just submit their Google Doc. So, so they for can, Google Doc, it's a website URL. Isn't that right, Clint? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Google Doc's just the same as a website. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're getting oh, yeah. close to time. Uh, okay. I did drop the, the role okay. into the chat, so make sure you follow that. Uh, link there and make sure you sign the role uh, and get your Midas points for being here today. Um, did have some other slides to share, but um, we'll do that next time. Um, and so if you're curious of where this recording is going to be, or if you want to go back and watch uh, previous ones, uh, this session will be actually the, we're streaming it live to YouTube right now. So that session recording link, you can go and, and rewatch it right now. Uh, but I'll also make sure that it's on that uh, YouTube or Tech Tuesday Tech Talk playlist. That's that second link there. So uh, make sure you sign the roll. Yeah. Um, and, and look at the rest of those slides there. because I put some links about how to access those enhanced assignments if you're interested in that workflow too. Yeah, there's some other links and resources in the 
in the rest of the slides. So we're willing to hang out and uh, answer any other questions on Canvas or anything else. Uh, but I'm going to stop the recording and um, we'll let we'll uh, we'll stick around and tell your questions are answered.